Magandang araw, April and Marcus po, ang inyong Pretty Ate sa EdTech Unit. Alam ba ninyo na may webinar o online training session ng EdTech Unit tuwing Sabado? Ang araw na ito ay nakalaan para sa ating mga mahal na kaguruan upang turuan sila ng mga bagong kaalaman at kakayahan sa paggamit ng mga bagong software at applications para sa pinaka-epektibong paraan at lubos mapaghusay ang kanilang paraan ng pagtuturo. This is also a refresher session for our beloved teachers to enhance their skills in technology. Every Saturday, we will conduct webinar sessions for teachers about the use, advantages, and relevance of different blended learning software applications. Ang webinar seryang ito ay magsisimula ng alas 9 ng umaga hanggang alas 12 ng tanghali para sa morning session. Magsisimula naman ng alauna at magtatapos ng alas 4 ng hapon ang afternoon session. You can watch us in our DepEd EdTech Unit Facebook page, Educational Technology Unit YouTube channel, DepEd Tayo and DepEd Philippines. Kita-kits tayo tuwing Sabado! Magandang araw, Sir Wilbur po at your service. Narito ang itulay upang gabayan ka sa inyong pag-aaral upang lubos na maunawaan ang iba't ibang paksa o subject. Ang itulay ay isang free online tutorial class na pinangungunahan ng ICTS Educational Technology Unit sa pumumuno ni Undersecretary Elaine Del B. Pasqua. Ang programang ito ay hindi lamang para sa mga bata, kundi ito rin ay magsisilbing gabay sa mga magulang at mga guro kung paano nila ituturo o gagabayan sa bawat asignatura ang kanilang mga anak o mga estudyante. Sa kasalukuyan, ang self-learning module mula sa regyon ng Calabarzon at kilala sa tawag na pivot ang ginagamit sa ating itulay online class. Kaya ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Ihanda na ang inyong mga ballpen o lapis, papel o kwaderno at samahan kaming itulay ang pagkatuto para sa bawat batang Pilipino. Sama-sama tayong magtutulungan para malampasan ang mga hamon sa panahong ito. Halina't matuto kasama ang inyong online tutor sa oras na ito. All right, so good afternoon, everyone. Kumusta kayo? My name is Tutor Jester, and I'll be with you for the subject English 9. And we are on the third quarter, week one. And our topic for today is types and features of a play synopsis. Ayan, so kumusta kayo? I hope you are doing fine with your family, especially yung ating learners na karedi ng ating mga learning modules. Okay, so let's begin. We have here the facts. The stories have a beginning, a middle, and an ending. Indeed, di ba? Kapag may, kapag may uh, ang alam naman natin, ang kwento, dapat may simula, may yung gitna o yung body, and of course, yung ending or yung finale. Okay? The beginning of a story tells who the story is mostly about and where the story mostly takes place. Ito yung tinatawag natin character or characters o sa Tagalog, tauhan. Tauhan or your characters are who the story is mostly about. And aside from character, meron tayong tinatawag na setting. The setting is where the story mostly takes place. Kapag sinabi natin setting, we have the time and the place. Ayan. Now, the middle of a story tells you the things that happen. Medyo nagkaroon lang tayong typo error. That events are the things that happen in the story. The ending of a story tells how the problem is being solved or solved. The problem solution is how the problem is solved. Now, we have here our objectives. At the end of this session, you will be able to first define synopsis or play and play rather. And the second one, identify the types and features or elements of a play or synopsis. But before we continue, let me greet first our online learners, pati mga students, uh, pati yung ating mga parents, as well as our uh, fellow teachers watching from General Santos City, North District, Seleni Sebal. Ayan, si, si Ma'am Chuen Seville from Taal Senior High School, 
Buds Dalmo Salvatos watching from Sariaya, Quezon. Great, huh? Watching from Tirapawan City, we have Mom Helen Abahay Bergonya. Thank you so much for, for always keeping in touch sa ating EdTech Keto Live. Now, let's proceed. Ano bang makikita natin sa ating uh, screen at this moment? You have there the people. And how do you call that people in our topic? They are the what? They are the characters. All right. So kapag meron tayong stage play na tinatawag, we have the characters. And this has something to do with the, yun nga, tinatawag nating uh, play. Saan ba ginaganap? Sa stage mismo, di ba? Sa tanghalan. Kapag may character, may setup, may settings din. Kita natin yung backdrop. More on this later. Pero kita natin yung characters. They are having what? A conversation. May dialogue indeed. Ayan. Now, a play is a work written to be staged in a theater and in front of an audience or a live audience. The elements of a play are, first, we got the character or yung tauhan. Second, yung setting, yung time or yung at yung place. Third, yung plot. Fourth, conflict. Fifth, suspense. Ano ba yung suspense? May kinalamang ba yan sa horror lamang or sa thriller? Hmm. Let's find out later. And of course, the theme. Again, the elements of a play are character, setting, plot, conflict, suspense, and theme. According to Ma'am Jessica, kapag character daw, tinatawag din yan natin na actors and actresses. Definitely, or stage actor, stage actress, or theater um, actors, or theater actresses. Very good, huh? Watching from uh, General Santos, thank you so much po. We have here the directions, an activity for us to define what are those elements of a play para malaman natin kung ano yung kahulugan ng bawat isa, gawin nating activity. Directions, arrange the jumbled letters to form the correct word of the given meaning. Again, we are to arrange or rearrange the jumbled letters to form the correct word of the given meaning. Number one, it is the place and time where the events of the drama or play or story take place. Ano kaya ang tamang sagot for this? Meron tayong two clues. The first clue, yung meaning. Yung second clue, um, Yung jumbled letters. What do you think is the correct answer for this? All right, you got it right. Thank you so much for answering. And that is setting. Kapag sinabi natin setting, it involves yung lugar or yung place, pati yung time kung saan naganap yung istorya. Okay, thank you so much. Mom Chuenza, Jessica. And of course, also you got correct answers to it. And CK and Jumps. Doranila, thank you so much po. Next, we got this. It is the oppositions between characters. Oppositions between characters. What do you think is the answer for this? Ano kaya ang tamang element for this? Ayan. May tamang sagot ni Melito kanina, ha? Sir Melito, thank you so much. And the correct answer for this is definitely conflict. Watching here from Quirino National High School, Quirino District, Teacher Marisa. Thank you so much po. Ayan. Next, we got the ordered structure of a play. Again, the order structure of a play. Ano kayang element ito? Mm-hmm. Oh, ang dami nagsasagot, ha? Very nice. It's the... Yes. You get it right. It's the plot. Palakpakan naman ang mga sarili. Nakatuwa, no? Not only the students, but also the teachers and parents are having a nice time learning with our Itulay session. Okay? Next. Number four. Uh-huh. This one, very familiar with you. Very common, di ba? People involved in the story. Napakadali. People involved in the story. Definitely, it's the... 
Uh huh. Online, kindly put in your answers. It's indeed the characters. You got it right. Okay. Next, we got number five M E E T A. Meaning, a main idea or an underlying meaning of a literary work. It is the main idea or an underlying meaning of a literary work. What do you think? is that element watching from dr vivencio villa mayor integrated school division of Rizal. we got sir melito pagirigan vinara vilma dayo thank you so much also and you got it right tutor jessica or mom jessica it's the team melito thank you so much you got also the correct answer mom Enza, mary claire thank you so much Okay, so let's have the last one. It is the major crisis or the climax in the story. What do you think is the correct answer for this? P-E-N-S-E-S-U-S. -E what do you think is that? A major crisis or yung climax down ng story? Let's see. Put in your answers now. Come on. Watching from Tupi National High School, Division of South Cotabato. Wow, all the way from South Cotabato, we have Mom Ann Sheras. And the correct answer for that is the suspense. Sir Milito, you got it right. <laughs> Ann Sierras, thank you so much. You also got it right. Mary Claire also, thank you. All right, so let's proceed. Again, the elements of a play. All together at home, or kung nasa school man kayo, sabay-sabay natin, isigaw. <laughs> we have the elements of a play. Character, setting, plot, conflict, suspense, and theme. Sixth. <laughs> All right. Character, setting, plot, conflict, suspense, and the theme. All right? Now, oh, we have here a sort of question. Drama in play, similar. Parehas lang ba ang drama sa play? What do you think online? Key in your answers now. Parehas lang ba tinatawag natin drama and play? Are they both sa the same or similar? What is, the what is your answer? Let's find out. Mm -hmm. We got watching from... Okay, thank you so much. Huh? In some aspects, they are the same yeah sure yeah you got it right mr melito in some aspects or in some aspect pero not exactly and apart now yeah sorry drama and play are not actually the same but in some aspect according to sir melito and in other ways they are the same why bakit bakit nga ba natin tinatawag na they are not the same because drama and play are two words that are often confusing di ba minsan nakakonfuse di ba when it comes to their usage and meaning strictly speaking there is a difference between these two words now a drama is telling a story intended to be represented by actors and characters and speaking their dialogues katulad din ng play kaya somewhat um in some aspect nga tulad ng pelikula or uh, tinatawag nating uh, mga tv shows this can also be dramas but are not plays. Meanwhile, kapag uh, play naman, this can be musical, comedy, and the like. So, kung susumahin natin, they are the same, pero may particular na aspect na magkaiba sila. At alam niya na mga fellow teachers natin. Thank you so much po. Now, what are these? Let's have the next slides. Ano kaya ang mga ito? All right, so here are the types of plays in the Philippines, in our country, Philippines. At para malaman natin yan, um, ginawa ko siyang activity. Ayan. We got the directions. We are to rearrange the jumbled letters to form the correct word. Again, we are to rearrange the, the jumbled letters to form the correct word. All right, so it, number one, it is considered the highest point of Filipino folk literature and dates back to the pre-colonial period. 
You got it right, sir. Melito Pagirigan. It's epic poetry. Ano bang ibig sinuhin natin ng epic poetry? Bukod dito sa ating meaning na nasa screen. Kapag sinabi natin epic poetry, uh, this epic usually of uh, romance and um, adventure as well, uh, commonly presented during festivals daw and uh, gatherings such as baptism, weddings, um, even wakes. Pero ngayon, uh, no longer no longer na pinapractice natin. Kasi nga, noon pa yan, no, during pre-colonial period. Okay? You got it right, Mom Anne, Rosemary, tama, kay Waki, kay Je, ayan, kay uh, RG, thank you so much. So we have the first one, it's the epic poetry. Okay, next. Number two, it's a poetic debate presented through a song. And dance, which originated from indigenous courtship customs. Ayan. Ano ba yung pagsinabi natin courtship? Panliligaw, di ba? <laughs> so what do you think is the answer for this? You got it right once again. Sir Milito Pagiragan, Binarao. The answer for this is indeed duplo. Ayan. Kapag duplo naman, poets use proverbs and riddles. Ano ba yung riddles sa Tagalog? Sige nga, online, what is riddle in Tagalog? Alam naman natin na ang riddle ay... Oy, Mace, nagsasa ko dito sa aking kasama ko dito sa studio. Sabi ni Ma'am Angel, bugtong. Tama si Ma'am Angel. Pag sinabi natin, riddle, bugtong. Ano bang mga bugtong ang alam natin para medyo mabuhay lang ang ating uh, oras, uh, oras na ito? Ano ba yung mga bugtong na alam natin? O bugtongan daw, gustong gusto nila. <laughs> Baka maliyo tayo sa ating lesson ha. Okay, so babalikan ko ang inyong mga bugtong or riddle later on. I-type nyo lamang. <laughs> Alright. Okay. Okay. Ayan. O, oh, mamaya ako babasahin yan. So, next up, we got... Oh, number three. It is a street drama that usually lasted for several days. It's a street drama that usually lasted for several days, M-O-O-R, M-O-O-R. What do you think is the um, type of play this is? You are indeed correct, Sir Milito. It's Moro Moro. Ayan. You are also correct, Brian. Thank you so much. Ayan. Later, I will read your uh, bugtongs, <laughs> your riddles. Okay, it's moro moro. Kapag moro moro naman, um, usually uh, ito ay um, play, hindi lang actually sa tanghalan, but also a street drama sa sa kalye. May specific na uh, lugar sa Pilipinas kung saan tinatanghal ang uh, moro moro uh, street drama. Babalikan natin, ano? Yung lugar na yan. Okay? So. Ang tema daw ng Moro Moro has something to do with love and uh, parang it has something to do with also with yung vengeance. Ano ba yung vengeance? Yung pag... Oh. Pag sabi natin vengeance, ito ay yung pagbawi, ano? para meron akong gustong um, gawa, uh, actually parang meron akong gustong not in a, not in a bad way. Actually, not in a, in a bad way din, pero meron gustong i-pursue para bumawi sa isang tao or sa isang pangyayari. Right? Okay? Alright. So, okay. Yan, bumalik ang aking uh, signal. Thank you so much. Ayan. So, next we got the fourth one. It is a religious custom. What do you think? It's this type of play in our country, Philippines. Religious custom. It's what? And you got it right. It's the sinakulo. Uy, malapit na magkaroon ng sinakulo. Actually, kung doon nagkakamali, may mga ilang um, lugar na sa Pilipinas. Ah, no. Kasi during pandemic, actually, ikalawang taon na natin na walang sinakulo kasi nga mayroon tayong pandemia. Ano ba yung tinatawag nating sinakulo? This is the dramatization of the life and that yung paghihirap ni Jesus Christ na ating Panginoon 
ginaganap ito tuwing, of course, Semana Santa or kapag mahal na araw. For sure, ang ilan sa ating mga viewers, particularly mga teachers, they have, they have engaged themselves in this kind of play or sinakulo. Kung hindi man totally um, nanonood, baka ang isa, ilan sa kanila sa ating mga talented na teachers naging kabahagi na ng sinakulo play. Kung ito nagkakamali, ano, marami talaga, uh, I mean, marami akong mga naging kaibigan dito sa Taal Batangas na kasali sa sinakulo dito before. Ayan. Kaway-kaway din natin sa ating mga kaibigan from Sariaya, Quezon. Talagang maganda rin ang presentation nila doon. Meron tayo isang viewer from Sariaya, Quezon. For sure, nakaka-relate sila sa ganito. Okay? Alright. So, what about this one? This form was an American import in the pre-war era. O-B-D-A-B-L-I. This form was an American import in the pre-war era. What do you think is this type of play? It's Indeed, Bodabil. Thank you so much, Sir Vinarao. Also to Brian, Red Gem, Waki, Kay Rosemary. Thank you so much. Huh? All right. It's Bodabil. Kapag Bodabil, um, kumbaga, naging popular ito sa atin as Filipino pop culture. It featured a variety of musical numbers, even comedic skits. That includes the song or and dance numbers as well. Meron tayo mga kilala or popular Bodabil performers. Kung natatandaan nyo, ating king of comedy, naging Bodabil performer din siya. None other than Tito Dolphy. Tito Dolphy talaga. Kala ko kamag-anak ko, ano? Si Sir Dolphy Kizon. Ang isa sa mga kilala uh, Bodabil performer noon. Bago pa siya naging uh, artista, artista sa TV. Ayan. So again, here are the types of plays in the Philippines. We got the epic poetry, duplo, moro moro, sinakulo, and bodabil. Again, epic poetry, duplo, moro moro, sinakulo, and bodabil. Okay? All right. So good afternoon also to Konul Mirza Yeva. Okay. All right. So we got here the synopsis. So we are done with the play. Let's move on with the synopsis. Ang iba, ang tawag ay synopsis. Pero the correct um, pronunciation for this is synopsis. Pero we are accepting naman kung ano man ang paraan ng pagbikas. Ano? Pero ang appropriate talaga is synopsis. Okay? What is then a synopsis? A synopsis is a brief summary that gives audiences an idea of what a composition or a literary work is all about. Nakaka-relate dito yung mga TV producers, yung mga TV program producers din, mga, uh, specifically mga script writers, and even yung mga academic writers natin. Bakit? Let's find out later on. Okay, now... Gaya nga nung nabangit ko kanina, it provides an overview of the storyline or main points, which may include the style, genre, person, or characters, or setting. Now, you have here the icons, print, movies, and TV shows. We write synopsis for all kinds of things, any type of fiction or even non-fiction books, Academ including academic papers, journal, and newspaper articles, films, and TV shows. Ayan. Napakalaga talaga sa kanila ito. The, synop the synopsis must be no longer 250 words long. Dapat hanggang 250 words lamang. Ano? Para matatawag nating um, isa siyang synopsis. Kung baga, maikli. Kung may summary, may synopsis na mas maikli. Okay? When telling the story, dialogue should not be included. Hindi dapat kasali yung conversation, yung dialogue, or tinatawag natin may um, open and close quotation, quotation marks natin. Ano? Hindi na kailangan doon. Specifically, dapat um, declarative or statement yung synopsis. Okay? Alright. Next, we got the importance of synopsis. 
Ayan. Alamin natin ang kahalagahan ng synopsis. Synopsis is extremely valuable, necessary uh, pieces of, writ of writing for authors, filmmakers, TV producers, academic writers, and many others. Okay, ayan. And many others. Kaya <laughs> tayo sa private. Okay. Naghang lang tayo ng konti. Okay, so before that, yun nga. Ulitin ko ha, nagkaroon tayo ng technical problem na konti. Synopsis is, is extremely valuable and necessary pieces of writing for authors, filmmakers, even TV producers, academic writers, katulad natin, mga teachers na gumagawa ng mga last, gumagawa din ng mga stories, sumusulat ng mga stories, and many others. One On one level, it's what actually helps a book get published or a film or TV series get made. Why? Kailangan nating tandaan that a successful, a well-written synopsis can convince the person in charge of publication or production to bring a work to life. On the other hand, ito palang synopsis grabs the attention of the potential audiences. So kung gumagawa, kung ikaw ay isang film producer or filmmakers, gandahan mo yung pagsulat ng synopsis. Sabihin mo dun sa writer na kahit maikli yung uh, synopsis, nandoon na sigsik, liglig at umaapaw yung nilalaman ng, ng synopsis para kumbaga nandun yung gist ng story mo. Di ba? Okay? So, um, also, not only sa not only sa mga movies but also sa TV shows din. Okay? Now, here is an example of a short synopsis of the story Jack and Jill. I know you're familiar with this story, di ba? When we were younger, nung tayo mga bata pa, madalas natin naririnig ang song na ito. Actually, yun ay isa ding story, Jack and Jill. Now, ito yung aking na-prepare na synopsis of Jack and Jill. Jack and Jill is the story of a boy and a girl who went up a hill together. They went to fetch a pail of water, but unfortunately, their plan is disrupted when Jack falls and hits his head and rolls back down the hill. Then, Jill falls too and comes stumbling down after Jack. Ulitin ko ha? Jack and Jill is the story of a boy and a girl who went up a hill together. They went to fetch a pail of water, but unfortunately, their plan is disrupted when Jack falls and hits his head and rolls back down the hill. Then, Jill falls too and comes tumbling down after Jack. So, uh, um, online, sige nga, tingnan natin kung ano ba yung napansin ninyo doon sa synopsis ng Jack and Jill. Ano ba yung napansin ninyo actually doon sa nabuo ni, Sir, ni Tutor Jester dito? Is it that long or napakaikli? Maikli ba in a sense na hindi siya maintindihan at maunawaan o maikli in a sense na nandoon na yung mismong content, yung mismong nilalaman, yung mismong mensahe ng isang story, although maikli siya nandoon na, hindi ba? Okay, so according to Melito Pagirigan, synopsis is told, written, and the third person point of view. Definitely, tama ka dyan, Sir Melito. Kapag sinabi natin yung synopsis, written siya, sinusulat siya actually kapag nasa third person point of view na. So, wala na siyang mga dialogue, no conversation at all. Okay? Did you understand? Good job! Okay. Next. So, here are the things that we need to consider in writing a synopsis. First is, yeah, you need to begin with a hook. Alam na alam to ng mga teachers, ha? Kapag sinabi natin hook, ano ba ito? Sa lesson planning. Patuloy na sa lesson planning. We need to begin with a hook. Students, ha? Make sure if you write a synopsis, mayroon tayo, tinatawag natin, motivation. Okay? Kapag sinabi natin hook, mamomotivate yung ating reader. O mamomotivate kung, kung sino mang audience na mayroon tayo, di ba? It should be something interesting to grab the audience's interest. 
mahalaga na kapag may hook, may interest na nakapaloob dito. So, make sure maging maganda ang simula pa lamang ng iyong um, synopsis. Unang sentence, may hook na kaagad. May interesting kaagad. Next one is, you need to give a clear summary of what the work is about. Third, introduce the characters. Huwag kakalimutan, of course, although may kliyan, huwag kakalimutan ang character, ha? <laughs> okay. So kapag character, meron tayong tinatawag na protagonist at meron tayong antagonist. Kapag protagonist, alam natin, ito yung bida. At kapag antagonist, ito yung, yung opposite, yung kalaban. Normally, di ba? Okay. Next, we got number four. Outline the major or yung mahalagang plot points. No need for you to include yung mga hindi naman um, important na details. Only the important ones. Okay? If introduce the setting, the time and place. Napakahalaga niyan. And six, identify a major conflict or turning point. We should also include that. So according to Mary Claire Rivero, sir, it's short and understandable. Thank you so much for participating. To Konul, thank you so much also. Okay. Now let's have the activity. The reference, read the synopsis from the story, Beowulf, and then try to identify if it follows the guidelines on how to write a plot summary. Are you ready? Okay. Let's begin our activity. But before that, batiin muna natin pala. Sorry, ah. Batiin muna natin ang ating mga um, online viewers from different um, SDOs and also students from different parts of the Philippines. Thank you so much. I hope nakatulong si Sir Jester sa pagsagot ng inyong mga module. Ayan. Uy, maraming salamat sa nag-comment, ha? Thank you so much po. So let's begin. Hey, wait, familiar na ba kayo sa Beowulf? Of course, kasi last grading period or last quarter, pinag-aralan natin ang Beowulf. Medyo balikan lamang natin ng konti. And it serves as an example for this um, topic or activity. Okay? So let's begin. Beowulf tells the story of a warrior named Beowulf. Beowulf comes to the aid of King Rothgar, whose kingdom is being terrorized by a monster named Grendel. The courageous Beowulf uses his epic strength to kill Grendel, then slays Grendel's vengeful mother before returning home to Gitland. Beowulf later becomes the king of the Gits and rules for a peaceful 50 years. When a dragon begins to pose a threat to Gitland, Beowulf and his servant Wiglap set off to defeat it. Beowulf succeed in slaying the dragon but dies in the process. Watching from Beliran Division, Nilda, si Ma'am Nilda. Okay? So, ulitin natin ha. Beowulf tells the story of a warrior named Beowulf. Comes, Beowulf comes to the aid of King Rothgar, whose kingdom is being terrorized by a monster named Grendel. The courageous Beowulf uses his epic strength to kill Grendel and then slays Grendel's vengeful mother before returning to home, Gitland. Beowulf later becomes the king of the Gits and rules for a peaceful 50 years. When a dragon begins to pose a threat to Gitland, Beowulf and his servant Wiglap set off to defeat it. Beowulf succeed in slaying the dragon but dies in the process. So that is, that is an example of a synopsis of the epic Beowulf. Now, let's have the activity. Number one, there is a dialogue in the text. What do you think? True or false? Meron bang dialogue ako include doon? Meron bang salitaan? Meron bang conversation? Meron bang naka-quotation mark? Aha? Uh -huh. Online? Key in your answers? And wala do po according to Sir Melito. Definitely false. No. Okay, you got it right. Thank you so much for participating. Next, number two. The character's description is not brief. The character's description. It's not brief. Aha. Uh -huh. What do you think? Ano ba yung pagkakagawa ko doon? True or false? Character's description is not brief. 
may play lang ba yung description? Ay, hindi daw ba may play? O mahaba ba daw yung description ng character? True or false? It's... Oh, hindi, medyo nagkaroon lang tayo ng technical difficulty. Pero, it's false. You got it right, Sir Waki. Uh, si Waki yata, isang estudyante, ha? Very good, ha? Nakikiisa sa atin. Isang grade 9 learner. Thank you. Very good. Ganun din kay Sir Milito. Ala, galing. So, it's false. So, kung mapapansin ninyo, dun sa ginawa kong synopsis ng paywall, may kli lang din yung character's description. Okay? Okay, let's proceed with the third one. Number three. The story is in order. Nakakasunod-sunod ba ang uh, paggawa ko ng story dun sa synopsis na yon? Definitely. Ako pa ba? <laughs> Just kidding. Ano? So, the story is definitely in order. So, let us um, remember na kapag any kind of literature na pina-activity ni teacher, ni sir or ni ma'am, dapat kung yan man ay short story and specifically our topic is synopsis, yan should be in proper order. Okay? Thank you so much, Ma'am Donna, Ma'am Nilda. Thank you so much, Ma'am Arlene. Thank you so much po. Now, here is a challenge for you guys. Before I leave, I want you to do this. And here is the drill. Think of your favorite story. And ano, ano ba yung mga favorite story niyo? Kahit nung kay bata pa, pwedeng Cinderella, pwedeng Sleeping Beauty, ayan. Movie. Titanic, o talagang napapakamala ng edad natin, ano? <laughs> or even TV show can be K-drama or what so. Then, I want you to create its synopsis. Papaano, sir? Type in your answers in the comment box. Meron tayong type of error. It should be double M. Type in your answers in the comment box once you're done. Again, um, online viewers, students, teachers, uh, parents, gawa kayo ng uh, synopsis ng inyong favorite story or movie or even TV show. can be K-drama or whatsoever. Then, ilagay, itype ang inyong answers in this comment box. Pwede nyo balikan ito kahit hindi na tayo live. Okay? All right. So, that is your challenge. Now, bago ko magpaalam, choose, choose English Day. Every Tuesday po tayo ang English uh, team from 1 o'clock until 4.20 in the afternoon. I am your tutor jester, English 9 from 3 o'clock until 3.40. Mapapanood tayo sa different Facebook at YouTube YouTube pages ng DepEd, EdTech, and DepEd Philippines. Susunod na po, si Tutor Wilma. Thank you so much and have a great day. Cognizant to the needs of our learners, parents, and teachers, the Department of Education provided us with powerful tools for productivity that will allow us to foster critical thinking skills, problem-solving skills, communication and collaboration skills to be compassionate, responsible global citizens. Join us and discover new ideas in our series of professional development training program with the ICTS EdTech Unit and Microsoft Education Philippines. Together, we will equip our learners and empower our fellow educators for a dynamic future. Para sa bata, para sa bayan, at para sa guro. Sulong Edukalidad.